Hello. I wanted today to uh, <clears throat> cover how to work with mantra, the use of mantra in uh, meditation. Now, if you uh, look at uh, the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying by Sovereign Rinpoche, uh, he presents the use of mantra as a form of shamatha. So that's how we're going to discuss this today. Uh, there's other ways that mantra is used doing uh, more advanced practices of sadhana and so on, uh, but we're not, kind of gonna, we're not going to cover that today. We'll cover it as a form of shamatha. As you might recall, uh, <clears throat> there's a division in basic meditation of, between shamatha or calm abiding uh, and uh, vipassana or clear seeing practices. Uh, now, the clear seeing practices are in the more advanced, they require a foundation. To require a foundation of shamatha, which is basically just relaxing the mind, enough that there's a basic calm, a basic absence of thought, or in the presence of thought, the mind is not pulled into, you know, the obsessive chain of thinking. That's what provides the uh, laboratory, you might say, for vipassana, which is the practice of clear seeing or looking at the mind to explore the nature of the mind. Of course, even in shamatha, there's a degree of vipassana because we check our mind to see if the mind is calm, if the mind is agitated. We inevitably become aware of the movements of the mind, the generation of thought. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of insight that, that in fact is acquired during uh, shamatha. But um, again, the shamatha primarily is the calming practice. Now, with the mantra, um, mantra is uh, can be used as another form of shamatha. Some of us have a more difficult time starting following the breath as the traditional, especially from Western shamatha practice. So, the word mantra is said to mean actually protection for the mind and <clears throat> it gives the mind again something more concrete and solid to focus on rather than the chain of thought and fantasies with which we create the samsaric world, the you know, fantasy world that we believe is real. So uh, mantra, uh, I'm going to present two mantras because these are the ones again the sort of Rinpoche presents. One is the Mani Mantra, the Mantra of Chenvezi which is very popular, is the Om Mani Pame Hum. Now notice um, it's often mispronounced because it's in the Sanskrit as Padme, Om Mani Padme Hum. It is indeed written that way, but with the Tibetan accent, we're, we're dealing with the Tibetan tradition, the pronunciation is more like Om Mani Pame Hum, Om Mani Pame Hum. So if you hear it pronounced Om Mani Padme Hum, you know it's being pronounced incorrectly. Uh, very common in there's a number of songs and music and things that, um, that mispronounce that much. Om Mani Pem Hum. Hum. Om Mani Pem Hum. The other one is um, the mantra of Guru Rinpoche, the Benza Guru mantra, which is Om Hum Benza Guru Pem Asiri Hum. Om Hum Benza Guru Pem Asiri Hum. Now mantra, often people ask, you know, what does mantra mean? Uh, what does it mean? Well, uh, it is composed of sort of, uh, not random, but chained together Sanskrit words, which in fact uh, really don't ultimately mean anything. For example, Om Mani Peme Hum, yeah, Mani means jewel, Peme means lotus. So it translates, you know, jewel and the lotus and so on. Uh, and then again, the Benza uh, Guru Mantra, Om Hum Benza, Benza is Vajra, which is the uh, ultimate, the, the diamond-like quality of reality. Uh, Vajra, um, Om Benza, Guru Pema, of course, Guru, uh, Guru Ripoche is Guru Pema. Pema is because he was born in a lotus, <coughs> it is said. He was born uh, in the body of an eight-year-old, fully grown from a lotus in Lake, uh, believe it was Lake Danakosha. Uh, but those things aside, the mantra is, think of it, it's more than a prayer, okay? It's more than just uh, an inspirational thing that you're saying. 
the mantra I said to contain the very essence, the very energy of that Buddha or, or that being. So that the Mani mantra, uh, again, uh, Mani Premahun, contains the depth of compassion of Chirezi, who stands really for the compassion of all the Buddhas. And the, the Benza Guru Mantra, Oma Hum Benza Guru Pema Singhu, contains the very essence of Guru Rinpoche, who is the embodiment of all the Buddhas. Very powerful being that, um, you know, it's a cosmic being. I mean, he is more than a man that came to Tibet. It's like he, uh, Guru Rinpoche embodies that universal principle of uh, Buddhahood. So it's a very powerful principle, and as we say it, our own being becomes infused with that energy. In the very living energy of Guru Rinpoche is not, does not a symbol for Guru Rinpoche, it is the living energy of Guru Rinpoche. So if you chant that mantra, you become infused with that very energy, you become one with the energy of all the Buddhas. Uh, so that's very powerful and transformative. Uh, the more you say a mantra, the more you feel, you know, it's its effects. Now, if you say, you know, 10 or 12, well, you know, what do you expect, right? You get what you put into it. But uh, people count the number of repetitions, they say. For example, it is said that if you do the money mantra for a deceased of someone who's passed on, if you say it 100,000 times, that would be sufficient to remove that person from the health if they are in that or to bring him to higher rebirth. Um, again, the Guru, the Benta Guru Mantra is that <coughs> it's part of the Nandra, the preliminary practices. And again, the aim there is to do 100,000. So people count. And speaking of counting, uh, I have here a mala. It's what they call the Buddhist rosary. See here, it's got the beads, and then at the end it has what they call counter the by which you can count every time you do a hundred that would be one hundred that would be two hundred and so on until you get a thousand and then you begin to count the thousands here so there's quite a bit of room for counting i'm not going to go more into more depth about that now if you use the mala it's not necessary to use the mala unless you are doing accumulations which is a great great thing to do because it also gives you confidence, it gives you a sense of having accomplished a certain degree of uh, work, a certain degree of uh, real, um, not realization, but um, uh, accruing virtue. In any case, the, how you use the mala, uh, the mala contains 108 beats, in this case there are uh, spacer beats here, so it's 111 CV yellow one. Can you see the yellow? Yeah, can you, see, you can see the yellow one there. That's a space of eight. There's three of those. And uh, the total of 111. You count 100, the extras are just in case you were not concentrated. Then you get a little bit of uh, leeway there when you count it. You hold it with your left hand in your heart, toward your heart. You can't hardly even see it very well, but assume I'm holding it to my heart and then with the thumb you count the beats. Oh my come on, oh my come on, oh my come on. The beat you can you move the beads towards you, visualizing that the energy is going into your heart. Oh my come on, my come on, my come on, oh my come on. You can go quite fast. You can really go quite fast. Uh, the same thing with the Guru Mantra as you say. And then you can begin to say mentally. You can do it quite, quite fast. Then as you do a complete mala, you record either in here or in a notebook that you have completed a um, hundred. Uh, that's pretty much it. I'm trying to think of what else to say. But, you know, you set up your session. You sit in your meditation posture. And um, begin to say mantra. First all out, if you want, you can say it a lot the whole time. I start um, all out, uh, Om Mani Padme Hum, Om Mani Padme Hum, Om Mani Padme Hum, Om Mani Padme Hum. Then begin to say it mentally. And you can say it aside 
either you know a number of mantras that you want to say or uh,